Hi there. What we are going to show you in this video is so unique you will not find it in another channel. We are going to highlight a new tool to help create Kubernetes high availability clusters. First, we will answer three questions, give a short explanation of the requirements of the tool, and then we will get our hands dirty. To access the blog, this link a link to our blog's URL is published below. Just have a look down below and you will find all the information. In greater detail, explanations to all the questions. Let's start. We are now going to show you how to add a production grade Kubernetes cluster to your Proxmox home lab. We will be using the Rancher Kubernetes K3S instead of the standard Google Kubernetes K8S. You need to know that K3S is a fully compliant production grade Kubernetes distribution. What you also need to know is the size of the binaries. The K3S is only 40 megabytes, whereas the Google Kubernetes K8S is 300 megabytes, and it needs a lot more RAM to run in than the K3S. K3S is so small you can run it on a Raspberry Pi with 2 gigabyte of RAM. If IoT or edge computing is your game, then K3S is for you. K3S is a fork of the original Kubernetes K8S, so it's the same software base with the bloat thrown out. If you have not installed Proxmox yet, it is an excellent opportunity to look at the following Proxmox training from the Learn Linux channel. We get probably the best Proxmox training there, and we will also provide this link to you. Otherwise, congratulations on installing Proxmox and creating your home lab. Now we want to get our hands dirty. We want to create the K3S clusters. Just before we get our hands dirty and create the Kubernetes cluster on your home lab, we need to explain the tool that we are going to use, what clusters it can create. We are going to be using the K3S Cluster Maker Python software, which we developed. This will enable us to create a K3S HA or high availability production cluster, a standard cluster, a minimal Kubernetes deployment. You need to be aware of the K3S cluster requirements. Firstly, if you are creating the K3S high availability clusters for production purposes, then you need to have three, five, seven or more odd number of master node servers and as many worker node servers as you can provision. This is ideal for a Google system which can be deployed across multiple data centers. The standard cluster requires only one master node and three or more worker nodes to be provisioned. And with a minimal system for playing with Kubernetes commands, you basically only need a single master node server and optionally a worker node. There's one more requirement we need to be aware of. Firstly, you don't need DNS certificates but you do need to have a fully qualified domain name, a name like rabbit.loseyourip.com. Now, you can get these for free if you don't have a service provider. Go to dynosystems.inc. We provide a link to this below. On registering, they will give you four free FQDNs or fully qualified domain names. We will demonstrate how to do this as well. After creating your account and logging in, you will see that they have this DDNS services. And in here, you create your fully qualified domain names. Basically, what you do is you give it the name and the IP address of that server. It's as simple as that. You click the add button, you first start with a domain name, 
so let's say i want it to be lion and then you choose which domain you want And then once you've added it, then you go and set the IP address. At this point, we are ready to work with the cluster maker. You can go to GitLab. This is the link. And you can, you can either clone the project, git clone there, and then you have all the files you need, or you can manually copy them. To save you time, we have already embedded them in this document. First, connect to our server. The first thing we need to do is we need to SSH to the master node server. We will be doing everything, orchestrating the entire process from this server. We also need to elevate our security. So we will use the sudo switch user command to elevate us to root. Now that we have elevated ourselves to root, we're now in a position to create the files. We will start by creating the all nodes config YAML file. Now you will notice when I hit the enter button, the screen will be pre-populated as I've already been testing this on this machine. But in your case, you would then copy this content from here and paste it in there and then save it. Control S, Control X. Now let's have a look at this file. The top part here is the primary node. This is your first master server node or the primary master node. So here we will specify the IP address. You see, there's a field for the IP address there's a field for the FQDN and this server will be called buffalo.loseyourip.com which you saw we had registered in the Dynu. We also need the user ID to be able to SSH to this server. So that is my user ID. And then you'll see there's a token field here which we need to change after we have created the primary master node we will then get a new token for that and we will replace it here and then we will be able to run the the program again to update our cluster deployment schedule if you are using the high availability option you will see that this is a yaml file with an array of servers each one of these is a server detail so you just add more currently it's set up for three master nodes but if you want to use five you need to add two more and if you are not going to be doing a high availability cluster then ignore that don't remove it just ignore that as many worker nodes as you need you will then add underneath here notice again the details of all these records is identical the nickname is what identifies each record so this is a first worker node and if you have seven worker nodes you'll just add another five below this each one starts with a dash every record in this yaml file begins with a dash and a space that's to show that these are records and then we have the target file so leave this because th this is what we are going to create the cluster deployment schedule having created this file having edited it for our cluster requirement now we want to add the program it's a python script and this is the command we will run And you will see the scripts already in my machine. So in your case, you will copy this content here. It's quite big. Up to there. You will copy all this and paste it in there. What this is, is a Python program that reads the YAML file 
and it will generate the schedule file so let's save this Control s Control x one more thing we need to do we need to make this executable now i use the chmod 775 command i am aware of my sysadmin colleagues who prefer to you to use the chmod plus x command so that's the reason i've put this here to humor them but i run that so you can do the same if you know better tell me below in the comments having done that let's now have a look and see what we got ls minus la let's add a t so that we can bring the new stuff to the top so you can see the newest file has been made executable and then below that we have the all nodes config yaml so we're now ready to generate the cluster deployment schedule it's as simple as this dot slash k3s cluster maker when i run this it will generate the cluster deployment schedule now if we run ls minus lat or dash lat you will see now that the cluster deployment schedule was just created we are now ready to create a cluster we want to do a cat of the cluster deployment schedule this schedule is used to create every node in the cluster we first begin using the primary master node so these are all the instructions you need to run for the primary master node after that if you are going to do the k3s high availability cluster then you will have a second master and a third master so those are the instructions we will run and then we will also create worker nodes since i already have my cluster i don't want to destroy my cluster so i'm going to demonstrate it on another server to to show you if i use the kubectl get nodes command you can see it's told me that this server here buffalo is the master server these are worker nodes and you can see that this server is not running that tells me i need to start it in my proxmox i could have made these auto start but to prevent issues i'm going to start it manually here and just display the console At this point in time, if I run this command again, it should be up. Not ready. Give it a few minutes. And now it's up. To prevent damage to our cluster, we are going to connect to a different machine. IP 188. And now we will take the information straight out of the schedule. So we want to switch users as root. We are now root and not nick. Now these commands are provided to delete previous K3S server and agent installations. So in this case, copy, paste. And this thing was set up as an agent. So we're going to delete the agent. Now we can create, we need to give it a node IP. But remember we said we logged on to server 188. So, so that is our node IP. We can use the name Buffalo. This is fine. Copy. Now we take this command. This command will download the installation actually. This is pulling the binary from github.com and this will create a master server.
So we run this command and we see now that Buffalo lose your IP is a master node. There is one more command we need to run whenever creating master nodes. And that's this command here. Cat. And that's to cat the token. So if I go here and I run it, this is my token. It will be used for other nodes to authenticate to this cluster. Now that we've created a master node, we also want to create a worker node. Having demonstrated how we created a master node, now we would like to demonstrate how to create worker nodes. We are going to reuse this server. So these are the commands that came out of that cluster deployment schedule. So I've already connected to it and I'm already connected as root. So that's fine. I now need to run the kill all command. And because this is a server, I need to run this command, not the agent, but this command. And now we have completely removed Kubernetes from this machine. It's no it is no longer a node. We will now add these commands and paste them onto the server. What we have here is the token that was created by the other master node our primary master node of our existing network. I had to exercise caution not to destroy my cluster, but to just create a temporary test cluster. And then this specifies the URL of the master node, you can see its IP is 88 and it is listening on port 6443. Now, in this case, our FQDN is tiger.loseyourip.com. And we also give it a node IP. So these are the four parameters we need to pass. And then we can run this command. And while this is running, let's open the other server. We run a get notes command and you can see that it says the tiger is not ready. I can actually delete it. We wait for this deployment to take place. The agent is about to start. Okay, now here we should find it. 
and it says the tiger is there but it's not ready after a few minutes now it's ready thank you for watching this video we trust you found this useful please give us a like give us a comment tell us what you didn't like be honest and also what you liked about our unique approach and subscribe to our channel so our channel can grow and you can get some interesting content <music>